set time to be holy. Speak off with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to seek. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitted for service aboard. The greatest event of the history of history of mankind that Jesus will come for his church, grant everyone the grace of preparation in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord divine, we are praying for transformation, the power of change, the power of salvation, the power of cleansing. Oh Lord, the power of commitment will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. The hunger and taste for heaven, the promised land, put it in the heart of everyone, in the heart of the man, in the heart of the woman, in the heart of the little children, in Jesus' name. Let it be our comfort. Let it be our greeting. Let it be our discussion. Thank you, Father, for answering. Speak to us today with the voice of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. We can be seated. This moment we are considering preparation for heaven. Preparation for heaven. Can you say it? Can you say it again? We're going to go through the book of Joshua. Chapter 1. Joshua. Chapter 1. I read from verse 1. Now, after the date of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over this Jordan thou and all these people unto the land which I do give to them even to the children of Israel every place that the sole of your food shall trade upon that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein, 
day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Amen. Now, when the children of Israel were about to cross over the, 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 to the promised land after the date of Moses, the Lord called and commissioned Joshua. It was, he was the new commander by which Israel would inherit the long desired land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The Lord promised Joshua. He said, you're going to succeed in this mission because I'm calling you. I'm giving you special commission. The commission is to carry these people to the promised land. You are carrying these people to cross over to inherit. And the time actually is short for this work. I'm taking you, but I'm telling you that you're going to succeed. You're going to prosper. He told Joshua of the victory he was going to have. He told Joshua of the great expanse that he was going to give him. And he told him that he was going to be with him. He told Joshua that by his ministry, Israel will possess the land. Look at it in verse 6. And in verse 6 of that scripture. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide an inheritance, the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give unto them. Joshua, by your hand, Israel shall enter into this land and possess it. By your hand, by the, your ministry, by what I shall use you to accomplish, Israel shall enter into the new land. The promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, and they shall possess it. That's the promise God gave to Joshua. Now, the long promise of heaven, the long promise of heaven is shortly to be realized. Amen. Heaven is about coming. The rapture is about taking place. So, now, the Lord is raising up commanders. The Lord is raising up ministers. The Lord is raising up men and women of this end time. He is raising up people and is commissioning them with the grace, with the calling, with the ability to carry the church to heaven. That's what the Lord is doing at this time. Yes, people, the Lord is going to give them the grace. And they're sitting before me now. They're standing around us here now. The heaven is already happening. The door of heaven is about opening. The Lord is raising up people that will serve as angels going into the land of Sodom, going into the land of Gomorrah, going into the parts of this world to drag men out of the world and to take them to heaven. Yes, these are the commanders of this present time that will be taking people to eternal life. God prepared Joshua for this great work. And through Joshua, Israel was prepared for entry into the promised land. God is preparing people. God is calling ministers through whom men, women, and children shall be prepared for heaven. You are going to be prepared because God is interested. God has raised up people. He has raised and commissioned people and they will work on your life and the result is that you will be one of those people entering heaven. Now, Divine commission of end time preachers. That's point number one. Divine commission 
of end time preacher. Number two, divine command for preparation for the rapture. Divine command for preparation for the rapture. And then we will take point number three, divine oppression in the hearts of the people. Divine oppression in the hearts of the people. Now, we go to point number one. Divine commission of end time preachers. Look at it again. In the book of Joshua, chapter one, he said, Now after the date of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your food shall trade upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses from the wilderness, and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide an inheritance. The I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And let us say, Amen. Joshua was an end-time commander by whose ministry Israel entered the promised land. How did God get him prepared and equipped for this special call, for this special work? Number one, the Lord commanded him. He said, Moses has died. Now, it is you I have chosen for this great work to take Israel to the promised land. Now, rise up. I have commanded you. Rise up. I have chosen you. Rise up. My spirit shall walk with you so that you will take Israel into the promised land. And the Lord assured him of success. He assured Joshua, you're going to succeed in this ministry, in this calling, that I am calling you and he promised me large expanse from this from he said you are going to cover a large expanse from this from the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river the river Euphrates all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast he, he promised him a great success, a large expanse, and the Lord promised him victory over every opposition. There shall no man, there shall no man, no demon, no Satan, nothing shall be able to withstand you. The power that shall back you up in your end time ministry, Joshua, no power in the sky above. No power on earth beneath, no power under the sea shall withstand you because the power of the Godhead shall back up your ministry. And then he exhort him, he said, He exhort him to strength and to courage of heart. Be strong and of a good courage. 
be strong and of a good courage. Have I not commanded you, Joshua? The problem with human beings on earth is fear. But I, God, stand behind you. The creator of the universe stands behind you. And I am saying, Joshua, be strong in your heart. Be courageous in your heart. Whatever anarchies you go to see, don't fear. I'm giving that land to you. Whatever opposition, whatever noise arises from among the Israelites, don't bother. I am giving you that land. I am standing behind you. The God of creation is standing behind you. And then, you see, he told Joshua, he said, this book. Everybody, can you read that, raise up that book? This book. He was talking to Joshua. Even when the book was just Genesis to, the, to Deuteronomy, the Lord was referring to this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it. Meditate on it day and night. That is the secret of success. That is the secret of entry. That is the secret of victory. And then he said, practice the word for yourself. Joshua, not only to preach this word, practice it, carry out the word for yourself, and then use it to lead others. Lead others by this word. Lead others by this word. That's how you can lead them to the promised land. Yes, and he warned him. He said he warned him against turning away from the world. He warned him against fear. He warned him against discouragement. And then he assured him of his full presence and of his faithfulness, even as seen in the ministry of Moses. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Now the Lord is speaking to some commanders. He has raised up today. The Lord is speaking to end time ministers. He has raised up today. The Lord is speaking to people. He has commissioned with the ministry of end time. The people that will prepare the human beings for the rapture. The people that will prepare the church for the rapture. The God of heaven is speaking from with the voice of heaven. He is saying, I have chosen you. I have given you commission. For this walk, because the rapture is taking place, the rapture is still going to, to appear. We are still going to hear the trumpet. The Lord is saying, you are among the rescue team of the last days. Therefore, he says, he's assuring you, you will succeed. You that God has called, the Lord is promising you success. Wave those hands of success before the Lord. The Lord is saying this hand shall succeed. The Lord is saying this woman shall succeed. The Lord is saying this man shall succeed. The Lord shall pour anointing upon your ministries. The Lord shall pour grace upon your ministries. In the name of Jesus. He is promising you a large expand. Your ministry shall grow very rapidly. It shall go, it shall gallop. It shall gallop. It shall, the Bible says, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. The Lord is pouring anointing of the last days. A little thing you touch shall be blessed. A little one of you shall become a great nation. He said, from this wilderness, yes, from this wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the Lord is pointing hands to the ends of the earth he is giving you ministry that is moving to the ends of the earth he is giving you ministry that is covering the society of men the lord shall give you a voice the lord shall give you a voice is the his end time voice end time voice and there shall be a great success and the lord is promising you victory you are going to overcome you will overcome Satan and all his kingdom. The power of victory shall be with you. The, everything they do against you shall not succeed. I am saying the Lord is raising people with the anointing of Apostle Paul. The Lord is raising up people with special wisdom and ministry. And whatever they do, 
Whatever they do, persecution shall not work on your life. Opposition shall not work in your life. Internal opposition shall never work in your life. External opposition shall never work against your life. All the plans and confederacy of the enemy, all those things in the dark places, all plans in the ocean, all plans in the sky above, all plans of darkness in the forest, everywhere they seek to meet together, it shall never succeed in your life. Yes, the Lord says, they shall no man be able to withstand your ministry. They shall no man be able to frustrate the work that God has called you. Yes, he's exhorting you to strength and courage. He said, be strong and of a good courage. Yes, be strong. The devil will roar. The devil will raise up men against you. The devil will do everything to stand against you. But be strong. The one saying you should be strong is the living God. The one saying you should be courageous is the God that made Satan. Is the God that made demons. Is the God that made human beings. Is the God that is the God of nature. The God of power. Once has God spoken and twice have I heard this. The power belongs unto God. The ones that said don't fear says underneath you are the everlasting arms. You are not going to fall. You are not going to fall. Therefore be strong and of a good courage. There is special work to do for our God. The Lord has chosen you. I said the Lord has chosen you. He will want to use you. Is it a small thing that the devil is carrying the people to hell? You are going to snatch those people from Satan. You will snatch them. God will use you to snatch them. Go and expand your ministry. And then a crowd of people are coming. People snatch out of the hand of the devil. I said they are coming in. I said they are coming in. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, now hold to the Bible. Do you have your Bible there? Can you raise it up again? Jesus Christ is saying, yes, everybody, including myself, we are raising up this Bible. He said, hold to this Bible. Meditate on this Bible. The word of God. That's the secret of victory. That's the secret of success. That is how you can be in heaven. That is how you can lead a team of people. That is how you can lead multitudes of people. They shall follow you behind, moving to heaven. Through this Bible, they shall move to heaven. Through this Bible, they shall speak the language of Zion. Through this Bible, they shall wear a crown. Yes, practice this word yourself. Don't just be a, don't be a preacher. Be a doer of this world. Be a doer. A practice of this world. Learn it by yourself. Yes, lead others by it. Lead others. If it is for heaven, then lead others by it. Paul said, if it is for this life only that we, uh, we have faith in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. The Lord has not sent you to go and raise money. The Lord has not sent you to go and enrich human beings. The Lord has not sent you for prosperity that you should go and cause people to have money. Your money perish with you. Yes, but food for the belly, belly for food, and both shall be destroyed. The Lord has raised you for the purpose of eternal life. He has raised you for the purpose of eternal life. Therefore, if it is for heaven, lead them by the word, by the word of righteousness, by the word of truth, by the word of holiness, by the word of faith in God, by the word of power over sin, power over Satan. Yes, lead them by the word of God. Lead them by it and that's how they can enter. The Lord is warning you. Don't turn away from this world. Don't turn away. Turn not away to the left hand side. Don't join the multitudes. Don't join backsliding preachers. Don't join heretic preachers. Turn not from it to the left hand. Turn not from it to the right hand side. Don't think another better approach is there. There's no better approach. If the word of God, the approach of the God of the word of God is crude, then it is the best approach. It is the best approach. If the word of God is traditional, then it is the best approach. There's no modern way. More than the traditional way. There's no modern way. That's the faith of the fathers. So, 
Stand by it. Turn not from it. Now, don't fear. The Lord is saying, don't fear. Jesus is saying, don't fear. Don't fear what men shall say. Don't fear what men shall do. Don't fear what Satan shall do. Don't fear your dreams. Even if you dreamed that you died, when you wake up from that dream, move forward. Don't be afraid. Whatever is saying, what noise of bed is at your backyard in the night, that bed shall make its noise and vanish. And your life shall be dead. I say your life shall be dead. Don't fear assassin. Don't fear witches and wizards. Don't fear occultic people. Don't fear conglomeration of people, association of people, confederacies of nations. Don't fear. The God of heaven said, I shall announce to you. Lay that, lay that hand upon your heart. God is telling me, I should tell you, this work of the end time requires courage. This work of the end time requires courage. This work of the end time requires courage. And the Lord said, I shall announce to you. The Lord says, I should put it in your spirit that you should not fear. You should not fear. You should not fear. Don't be discouraged. If you fail, rest up and move forward. If the people scatter, go and start building another one. Don't be discouraged. That's what the Lord is saying. Never you give up. Give up. Never. 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 If you cannot save anybody, you save your soul. If you cannot save anyone, you will save your soul. And by the divine promise of the last day, the Lord shall help you save people. Yes, he is assuring you of his full presence. He's saying, as I was with Moses, have you heard how God had been with the fathers of faith? Fathers of faith, historical men that brought revival to nations, brought revival to societies, brought revival to communities, brought revival to their churches. The Lord says, as I walked with those people, I said, walk visibly. You out of the fire that came and was burning when people were praying to God. Revival in Indonesia. He said, as I, wa I walked in that time, brother, sister, the Lord is saying he will walk now. Yeah. Therefore, expect the miracles in your ministry. Yeah. Expect something new. Yeah. Something different. Yeah. Something forward yeah. is coming upon your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, the Lord told Joshua. He gave him this encouragement. Now, point number two. Divine command for preparation for the rapture. Divine command for preparation for the rapture. In Joshua chapter 1, I read verse 10. Joshua Chapter 1, verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land, which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Can you see? Three days. Everybody said three days. Three days. I said three, three days. The Lord is giving us a privilege. Is it only for three days? Maybe. Three weeks? Maybe. Three months? Maybe. Three more years? I don't know, brother, but the time is short. The time is short see how short it was with joshua from commanding him from raising him up from commissioning him to actualizing it was three days was three days yes crossing the river jordan into the land of promise was to be three days how short the time was for both Joshua and the people to be ready. Having received the message from the Lord. 
Joshua passed it on to the people for quick and urgent preparation. You're going here to pass this message quickly. You're going to pass this message quickly for quick and urgent preparation. Preachers of this end time must pass the message of the Lord to the people. What are you going to tell them as you are going in the book of First Peter? I read chapter 4, verse 7. First Peter, chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible tells us that the end of all things is at hand. Be it therefore sober and watch unto prayer. <laughs> the end of all things, that's what you're going to tell people. Everything is ending up. The world is ending up. The church itself is ending up. Yes, the end of all things, that's the message. You are going to pass to the people. You're going to tell them Philippians chapter 4 verse 5 Philippians chapter 4 verse 5 let your moderation be known to all men the Lord is at hand you are going to tell the people as you also are hearing it for yourself the Lord is at hand I am passing it on to you the end of all things is, at, is already here the Lord is at hand yes that's the word of God that's what God wants you to know in the book of Revelation chapter 22 I read verse 7 Revelation chapter 22 verse 7 behold I come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the signs of the prophecy of this book that's what God is saying behold I come quickly the Lord is coming very quickly the Lord is coming very soon. Behold, I come quickly. That's what you're going to tell the world. Again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I read verse 29 to verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29 to 31. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remained. The bold day that have wives be as though they have none. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world pass it away brother and sister the world is ending the world is ending the end of all things at home the time is very short from the voice of the lord we're hearing from the announcement from heaven that we are hearing from time to time there's no more time the time is so short the time is so short. Therefore, this wall, the fashion of this wall is passing away. The buildings of this wall shall soon collapse. The industries of this wall shall soon collapse. The monies of this wall shall soon disappear. Everything, the beauties of this wall shall soon be wiped out. It shall soon be wiped out. Because a new thing is taking over. The God of heaven is taking over. He's coming to do a new thing. The time is short. That's what the word of God is telling us. Stand to this word. In Revelation chapter 20. Chapter 22. Verse 20. Revelation chapter 22. We read verse 20. He which testified this thing said. Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. He that testified these things said, Surely I come quickly. And even the saints are saying, Lord Jesus, come. We are waiting for you. 
We were waiting for you. Come. Because the devil wants to take away even the very elect. Lord, shorten your time and come. That the people remaining will not disappear. Backsliding will not carry the people away. So, Lord, come, Lord Jesus. Everybody say, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Say, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Exactly. That's the voice of the saints. They're calling on their master. They're calling on their savior. Come, Lord Jesus. And there be some standing here who shall not test of date until they see the Son of God coming in his kingdom. Look at it in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 28. Matthew chapter 16. I read verse 28. Verily, I say unto you, there be some standing here who shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Here Jesus was prophesying that he will come and meet people alive. He will come and meet people that have not died. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all die. But which people which people this was partially fulfilled from verse 17 after and after six days jesus take a peter james and john his brother and bring them up into an high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his garment was white as the light and behold there appeared unto them moses and elijah Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of, cloud, out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear Ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. Now, Jesus took them and made them see, have a glimpse at eternal reality. They went to see the, his transfigured body, bright, glorious. They went to see the eternal souls of men. Moses was alive. Elijah was alive. They went to see the union that God had with mankind. How God could talk to man and that fellowship is for eternity. They went to see that this was just a foretaste, a little prophecy. But the real, the real prophecy is going to be fulfilled in our time. That we shall not die, but Jesus shall meet us alive. This shall be fulfilled in our time. Why am I saying this? Why am I saying that this shall be fulfilled in our time? Because the Bible talks of a generation that shall not pass until these things are fulfilled. And we are that generation. In the book of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 verse 32 to 35. Matthew 24 verse 32 to 35. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, Know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Why are we the generation that shall not die? But that Jesus shall make us alive is because he referred us to the fig tree. We are seeing the fig tree of our day. He said, study the fig tree. Study. When, 
And he said, now learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender. When you watch the branch and it is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is near. You want to know when is summer coming. You watch in the fig tree. The fig tree will dictate the summer for you. The fig tree will interpret the summer for you. The fig tree will describe the summer for you. It's going to tell you when it shall be summer. You just watch the fig tree. I said, so likewise ye. When ye shall see all these things, does the fig tree in our town. Iniquity shall abound. And the love of many shall was called. And many shall be offended. There shall be false Christ. There shall be false prophets doing false wonders that even are affecting some believers. Yes, you see the fig trees. You look at the society. You see the multiplication of iniquity. You see the multiplication of immorality. You see the spread of nakedness. You see the woman losing her senses. You see in the civil service. You see that corruption has become sanctioned. Corruption. Everybody is there for himself. You look at everywhere. Look at the he, he look at history in the nations. You begin to see innovations. You begin to see decisions of world powers. You begin to look at this is summer that is near. It is summer that is near. Then when Jesus was going back to heaven as he was speaking to his disciples the disciples says now speak ye no more to us in proverbs now speak it ye plainly you are speaking plainly for generations the law preachers have been preaching by faith no man seemed to come to say i have gone to heaven i have gone to hell i have done this but in our time they are multiplied like the stars in the sky we have records we have testimonies they are multiplied god is speaking no more in dark speeches he is speaking no more in 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 families the lord is speaking plainly now divine revelations prophetic revelations manifestations of the mind of god appearances of jesus appearing to children appearing to youths appearing to men appearing to women taking people to heaven taking people to hell and we have crowds of many witnesses we have crowds of many witnesses now we are having multiplied dreams of the rapture multiply dreams dreams and dreams of the rapture people are dreaming children are dreaming women are dreaming men are dreaming even sinners they are dreaming dreams of the rapture the lord is speaking with plain language he began to speak with plain language when he was about to leave his disciples and go back to heaven now he has resumed to speak with plain language why summer is near the Lord is coming. The time of his coming is at hand. Has he given you a dream of the rapture? Can you raise up that hand as a crowd of many witnesses? Can you stand up? You have, the Lord gave you a dream of the rapture. To speak to the world that summer is near. We are in the time. Can you stand up upon your feet? Let, let the people see. The Lord, can, you, can you begin to wave that hand at the world? People that have to, can you turn your back and see crowd of many witnesses that are telling us that the rapture is at hand? Cloud to cloud, I mean a cloud of many witnesses that the God of heaven gave them dreams, gave them visions of the rapture. Some of them dream that they didn't meet the rapture. All is in preparation. That's why we are preparing for heaven. We are preparing you for heaven. You can sit down. We're getting you ready because heaven is at hand. We have seen the victory. We have studied the victory. We have had it. A particular brother spoke in one of our meetings he said the lord told him that he was going to send his son to him to speak with him he had a message for him 
a message that the whole world will hear what was it he didn't understand what it how it would be he didn't understand one afternoon the son of 12 years was sleeping this thing maybe three months three months ago one afternoon the son was deeply asleep and covered himself with cloth deeply asleep and began to speak if i can pick some of those words he said all things about my coming is at home my angels are ready to blow the trumpet when the wife of this man heard what the son was saying he ran to the husband and said come and see me come and hear mystery come and hear mystery the boy was deeply sleeping and deeply speaking yes i've set my angels to blow the trumpet tell my people they should go for evangelism from house to house from street to street whosoever is ashamed of me i also will be ashamed of him yes i have sent my angels to the north to gather my saints together i have i'm sending my angels to california the seat of satan to break it down well my my coming is very short i do not know when i will come but 2012 2013 may not pass when that boy finished speaking this he jumped out of his sleep as to run away the father grabbed him what happened what happened he so i saw bright light come from heaven upon me and a man in white garment stood and was talking to me that was the voice that was coming out the lord speak using dumb us to speak the voice of man to one sinners to one lethargic people to one backsliding people why can't the lord do again for you which way will he speak it no more in proverbs which way will the lord speak again my sister which way if you go to hell will you blame this god who can even estimate a time oh this is estimate the estimate of a man he is estimating it as a man because as regards that day he said no it no man not even the son of man but my father only when jesus is in the body of a man speaking to us as man he puts away divine knowledge and is dealing with us as man with blankness that is why he saw a fig tree and thought that there were fruits in the fig tree but when he went there he noticed that there were no fruits in the fig tree that's the knowledge of a man so if 2012 pass if 2013 pass and the rapture has not happened yes we will not say but he said no he's not giving you an exact time he is just studying as man he studying he said by the way i study heaven by the way i see the readiness of my father by the way i see the readiness of the angels by the way i look at the activities of satan by the way i look at the activities going on in the world by the way i study the victory of life i am thinking 2012 2013 may not pass that's jesus he's our he's our captain he's our elder brother he's speaking to help us whether if he tries to estimate just to if he tries to let us see how close it may help it may help the sleeping ones it may help the ignorant ones it may help those who are thinking there's still much time there's no much time even if 2012 pass for we are still in it even if 2013 pass brother i am thinking if jesus can give a period like this then there won't be too much after it there won't be too much after it prepare prepare go and tell your family to prepare wherever you go tell your friends to prepare tell your neighbors that they should prepare announce to the world that they should prepare because we shall soon see jesus we shall soon be going to heaven 
Yes, soon the Antichrist shall soon take over. Yes, soon the judgment of God shall fall into the world. Soon hellfire shall be realized by many. That's what the Lord wants you to know. Yes, He wants you to know. In your days, I will speak. I will say the word and perform it, see the Lord. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 12. In the book of Ezekiel, I want us to read chapter 12, verse 21 to 28. And the prince, and the prince that is among them, Ezekiel, chapter 12, verse 21, please. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, the days are prolonged and every vision fail it. Tell them therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more vain there be, be no more any vain vision or flattering divination within the, within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, all rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, the day, behold, day of the house of Israel, say, the vision that he seeth is for many days to come. And he prophesied of the times that are far off. Therefore, say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, there shall none of my word be prolonged any longer, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. God. Now, when I began to read, I come quickly. Surely I come quickly. The law, the time is short. He said, Those things have been there for thousands of years. Which thing? Now the Lord is saying they will happen. These words, I come quickly. We are in the time of the fulfillment of these scriptures. We are in the power. Surely the Lord is coming. I want to say to you, surely Jesus is coming. We are in the time of the scriptures. These scriptures were put there, but in our time, they shall run very rapidly. Because our time, our generation is the generation of fulfillment. That's why the Lord is saying, therefore, get ready. Now, finally, divine oppression in the hearts of the people remember again joshua remember you are the joshua remember the promised land so short remember the commission given to joshua remember the promises of god to back up joshua to fulfill this ministry now people you are there you are the people going to heaven you are the people crossing the river jordan into the promised land see how the children of israel responded in joshua chapter one i read verse 16 to 18 joshua chapter one verse 16 to 18 the bible tells us here saying and they answered joshua and they answered joshua all that thou commandest us we will do and whithersoever thou sentest us we will go according as we hearkened unto moses in all According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only in only the Lord thy God be with thee, 
as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be, that God rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. The children of Israel demonstrated a wonderful spirit of obedience to God and to Joshua, their human leader, who led them in the way of the Lord. Their pledge of obedience showed that God had performed divine work of cleansing in, the, in their hearts and in their lives. This was the spirit that granted them entry into the promised land. Can you see these people that gave Moses tough time? Can you see these people that came together in one spirit and promised and pledged entire obedience, entire submission, entire commitment, entire yieldedness? Can you see then something happened in their hearts? Because the Lord, Moses had said, the Lord your God shall circumcise your heart. He had told them in the book of Exodus, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, shortly before Moses died and the commission took off, he said, the Lord your God shall circumcise your heart. To love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that ye may live you and your children a divine work has been performed in their life brother and sister you must yield to go for a divine oppression because of the shortness of the journey because of the shortness of time perfect yieldedness is required in you for the Lord to remove that the love of the world, the love of material things, the pride of life that is still in you. Yes, that the Lord be removed, that association and friendship of the world that is still in you. That the Lord may remove from you the stinginess. You can never yield to the things of God. You can never submit to the things of God. You can never give for the name of the Lord. May the Lord do some special work in your life to let you know so that you can play your treasure in heaven. Because the mud will soon corrupt everything. Because the cockroaches shall soon eat up everything. Because the thief, the devil, shall soon break through the banks to impoverish everything and turn everything to the Antichrist. May the Lord do special work in your life that you will turn your back at the world. That you will face heaven. That you will face heaven and come to this total commitment. This total pledge that unto Jesus I surrender, that unto him you totally yield, that the Lord will put in you the love of God, the love for his name, the love for his people, the love for his church, the love for the work of God, the love for the ministers of the gospel, that the Lord might put in you the passion for souls, the passion for souls, that the Lord might cause tears to come out of your eyes concerning the perishing world, perishing relations, perishing father, perishing mother, perishing sister, perishing brother, perishing friends, perishing community, perishing nation, that the Lord will cause a tears to come out of your heart. May the Lord do personal work in your life. Where are you? Can you raise up that hand? I say, may God do personal cleansing. Personal cleansing. Personal cleansing. Personal change. Personal change. The stony heart. The rebellious heart. The stubborn heart should be removed from your life. The darkness, the darkness in your mind. May the Lord remove that darkness. May the Lord remove that darkness. May the light of eternity, may the ray from heaven has came down upon that child that caused that child to see Jesus. May that ray of light come upon your life. Can you 
you see the commitment of these people? They pledge to do all that Joshua commanded them to do. They pledge to go wherever Joshua asked them to go. They pledge to obey obey Joshua in all things just as they obeyed Moses. They, they pray that God would be with Joshua as he was with Moses. Only let the Lord your God be with you. They, do you know what they're saying to Joshua? Joshua, you know God is, the God is angry with sin. This thing that we commit our lives to you, if you go away from God, it's not only going to affect you, it will affect us. Because now, if you go away from God, Joshua, if you turn away from God, and you are, God is no more with you. God is, no, is going to delay the whole thing. It is going to affect our life. Oh, Joshua, stand. Only let your God be with you. Joshua, maintain the righteousness of this God. Maintain fellowship with this God. Stand on the truth of this God. God. Yes. And they exalted Joshua to remain true and faithful. Be strong and courageous in the Lord. Joshua, be strong and courageous. This is the spirit that will inherit eternal life. That will enter into heaven. You must submit to the oppression of God in your life. For your salvation and total cleansing and conformity to biblical truth. You must commit yourself to obey the word of God. The leadership of truth and righteousness. You must turn away and reject anyone that turns away from the doctrines, the doctrines of life, the doctrines of truth, the doctrines of holiness, and the doctrines of righteousness. If there be, because these people told Joshua, Joshua, whoever, we are not going to respect persons. We are not going to respect persons. It is the promised land. We have come right to the brink of Jordan. We are seeing the promised land ahead. Are we going to respect man? Will we allow any man to confuse us? To cause rebellion in our life? If there be any man that will be rebellious, that will be contrary, we will deal with him. If we are permitted to stone such one. We are going to stone them with stones. We are going to stone him with stones. We are going to stone her with stones. But in our day, in Christianity, if any preacher comes that will not preach these things, all these preachers that are telling their churches, go and wear earring, go and wear your jewelry, go and wear your trousers, I'm telling you, if you are among the children of Israel, you will remove that preacher from your church. If that church is the church that you bring the preacher, that preacher must go. I'm telling you, the coming of Christ is so near that you cannot respect person. Let no man preach any other doctrine. Let no man preach any other gospel. If any man preach any other gospel, contrary to the gospel of truth, the gospel of righteousness, the gospel of holiness, the gospel of restitution, let him be a curse. Let our God remove him. Let our God remove him. Let our God remove him. Let him be cast out of the church like a demon. In the name of Jesus. Here in woman stand. That gospel of holiness. Without jewelry. Without palming. Without attachment. Without all these ungodly dresses. A body exposing dresses. The wearing of trousers. The painting of your face. You are all this praying perfume upon your body. All this thing is the gospel of Jesus. Stand to it. If there come anybody that teaches. Let him not say he came from heaven. Let him not say he came and he saw the throne of God. If there came anyone, comes anyone, not preaching this thing, deny him, he, deny his testimony, deny his prophecy. It is not from God. I say it is not from God. Stand to truth, we shall go to heaven. The time has come, we shall cross this Jordan River. We are crossing up. One glorious morning, we shall see our Lord. One glorious morning we shall see our Savior. We shall see our Redeemer. And therefore stand to truth. Back up men of truth. Pray for men of truth. 
So put being of truth, preachers of righteousness, stand behind them. Preachers of holiness, stand behind them. Promote their work. Stand by them and don't be ashamed. The Bible says if you are ashamed to identify with truth, Jesus shall be ashamed of you. But now, brother, we're entering the promised land. We are soon going to enter. The river Jordan shall soon dry up. And we shall soon be crossing it. We shall soon be crossing it. I say we shall soon be crossing it. Now, go to the Lord and commit yourself to him. You are for this end time walk. You are, you are submitting fully to the Lord. Fully to the truth. Fully to righteousness. Submit yourself. Submit yourself. go to heaven the time has come the time has come the time of the rapture surely I come quickly surely I come quickly the Lord is coming the Lord is coming
in Jesus name we pray revival upon your life revival is coming upon your life everybody say revival now what is your case sin that will be removed what is your case commitment to god what is your case visitation of the holy ghost upon you whatever just raise up your hand before god and tell him what is your case revival is coming confess your sins if you're a sinner tell god to forgive you tell god to forgive you to change your life and let revival come upon your life let revival a change all lukewarmness should be removed all lukewarmness should be removed yes is it fear that fear must go that fear must go that fear must go a new thing will happen from God In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Almighty Father, your children are before you today. A God, we have yielded our hearts to your world. We have yielded our souls unto you. We have chosen the way of the Lord. Lord, we are waiting for your coming. But before you come, let there be a revival. Oh Lord, do special work in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we are saying, every kind of sin, Every kind of rebellion, every kind of wickedness, Lord, in the lives of your children, let them be removed. Almighty, we are praying the blood of Jesus. We wash the life of your children. The sinner shall be saved. Yeah. The backslider should be restored. Yeah. The weak should be made strong. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, we are praying for the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Holy Ghost. Let them come upon your children. In the name of Jesus. My Father, have mercy upon your church. That you will grant that a mighty quick revival will run to the through the church of God. Yeah. Will run through this wall. Yeah. Oh Lord, grant it. Let the Father back us up. Yeah. Let the Son back us up. Yeah. Let the Holy God back us up. Yeah. Let angels assist us in this duty. Yeah. Oh Lord, revival in the world. In the name of Jesus. As Samson pleaded for one chance to revenge upon the devil because of his eye. Oh, Father, the damage Satan has done to the church, the damage Satan has done to the lives of men, the darkness Satan has brought. The chain he has put upon the men of the world. The confusion in the church of backsliding. Give us one more time to revenge upon him. Give us one time to revenge upon the devil. 
Allah release your power in the name of Jesus. Brother, receive. Sister, receive. The Lord has answered. Yes, open the doors of heaven. The Lord has answered. Receive anointing. Receive the power of God. Receive the grace of God. Be restored. Be revived. Be revived. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. Holy Ghost is touching you. God is raising you up. God is strengthening your life. God is commissioning your life. Receive anointing. You will do exploit. You will do exploit. You will do exploit. Sinner, your sins are forgiven you. Stand and sin no more. Sin no more. Sin no more. In the name of Jesus. Begin to thank the Lord and worship Him. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, Revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiry, contact us on 0813 635 6813 and 0805 683 43 Two, three. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in You. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe.
believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you. I love you. I believe. I believe, I believe you, Lord, cause you are. 